lessons that students are learning in university are no longer practical. Where are the lessons on maximizing productivity to avoid burnout, setting and achieving long-term goals, how to get a raise or a job or a promotion, and finance management to avoid surprises later on in life? An education should involve learning life skills that a person will carry. Alexa, stop. Whoops, sorry about that. I hit the go live button too early. So quick uh, announcement for everybody. Uh, as you can see below, um, tomorrow uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific time, uh, I'm gonna be having my, um, that's my alarms go live. <laughs> I'm going to be having a, a webinar uh, about my eighth annual gold and platinum one-year MBA degree program. Uh, please join because everybody on the call will get two of my courses uh, for free. Um, and so my next gold and platinum one-year MBA degree program is actually going to be starting on January 29th. And it's going to be every Monday and Tuesday, starting on January 29th, from 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And this is the last time I'm keeping prices this low. It's not a sales tactic, but I am increasing all the prices in all my courses and my MBA programs materially uh, starting in February. Okay, so I think what I'll do today uh, is I'm gonna kick it off uh, by talking about Bitcoin. So we had really big news for Bitcoin. Uh, the SEC approved exchange traded funds, meaning ETS for Bitcoin. And this is incredibly positive for Bitcoin as it's basically a vote of confidence that the government is signaling that they will most definitely not make cryptocurrencies illegal. Now, I know that sounds like a stretch for many people, but there are investors uh, that are skeptical that believe that Bitcoin could face too many regulatory hurdles as Bitcoin has been banned in many countries. More importantly though, the biggest issue with buying Bitcoin for many investors has been how complicated it is to actually buy them as what you have to do is you have to buy a wallet like this one here, this is a Ledger Nano, which is not that intuitive to set up. It's actually pretty complicated. Then you feel really uncomfortable using it as we aren't sure uh, if we're getting scammed when buying Bitcoin, especially if you purchase these wallets from any source other than the producer of the wallet. And this uncertainty has led many investors to not buy Bitcoin, or once they set up the wallet, then at the last second, they buy half as much as they wanted to. And for those of you that have bought Bitcoin and put them in these wallets, you know exactly what I'm saying. Now we'll be able to buy Bitcoin easily and then sell them quickly if needed uh, using ETFs. And the fees will be relatively low at well under 0.5% using Bitcoin ETFs in the long run. Now, what does this mean? Well, when you buy ETFs, uh, there's a fee. And the fee, for example, on the gold ETF, ticker GLD, the fee on the gold ETF is 0.4%. And what that means is for every $100 you invest in the gold ETF, you pay 40 cents in fees per year, which is not bad. And once the gold ETF came out in 2004, I bought a lot of it and I doubled down on it in 2008. And I never felt comfortable buying gold bars as I didn't know if I was getting scammed. But once the GLD ETF came out, I felt very comfortable uh, buying it. And the same thing with Bitcoin ETFs. This will make investors so much more comfortable and will cause Bitcoin to go up materially in the long run. Now, please do your own research first and only consider buying Bitcoin ETFs from very reputable ETF companies and never ever make any investment more than 5% of your liquid net worth. And most importantly, buy when others are freaking out, meaning be a contrarian. And so the bottom line is finally, it's easier to buy Bitcoin because you don't need to use these counterintuitive devices, which is a significant positive catalyst for Bitcoin in the long run. Okay. All right, sorry about that mess up with the call earlier today, but that's okay. I had a great vacation. Um, I was in Hawaii with my family. We went to Oahu. Uh, it was incredible. It was, it was good to get away, good to get away, yeah. But it's good to be back too because I don't have a job, I have a passion. And that's how you know if you found your passion in life. When you're on vacation, you're like, you know what? I love my family, but I like work as well, not as much, and I miss work. So I missed all of you, yeah. So I wanna say Happy New Year to all of you. And before I take your questions, please keep typing them. 
what I want to do is I want to talk about goal setting. Okay. Now, Tony Robbins, I love my props. Tony Robbins said that 90% of people give up their news resolutions by the third week of January because they don't set a deadline date. So what I want you to do is I want you to set bag goals, B-H-A-G, which stands for big, hairy, <clears throat> audacious goals. Aim for the center, not for the outside. And I want you to set deadline dates as well. And I want you to share your goals with your friends and family. You've got to vocalize these goals because it'll put pressure on you. And I say it with love my heart. It'll put pressure on you to get these goals uh, accomplished. Because every time you see your friends and family, they'll ask you, how is that goal coming along? For example, for me, um, I went to a Tony Robbins event, uh, Unleash the Power Within, UPW, uh, in November 2015. And I recommend you all do that as well. Don't take any of my courses. Take his first, please. Um, but when I took his uh, UPW uh, 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 four-day uh, seminar in Los Angeles in November 2015, it changed my life. It changed my life because he made us write down our goals and set a deadline date. And so for me, for years, I, I was writing a book called 101 Crucial Lessons. Uh, they, don't, uh, uh, they, they don't teach you in business school. I was writing this for years. And Tony made all of us write down a deadline date when we we're going to finish it. And so on the last day of the four-day UPW event, on the last day, he told us to write a deadline date for one specific goal. And so for me, I said, you know what? I, I told my family about this. They've been asking me for years at Thanksgiving, et cetera. When's a book coming out? I'm setting a deadline date. And I set a deadline date of three weeks to get the book done in November, 2015. And so Sunday night, I flew back uh, from LA to San Francisco after attending UPW. And my feet were hurting a lot because he made us walk over these boiling hot uh, coal. Uh, yeah, it, it was rough, but I'm glad I did it. And I went to work that Monday morning. And it was at a venture capital firm where I was a partner. And I only lasted until noon that day. And I told my partners, I said, guys, I, I'm just not feeling I'm going home. And they're like, cool, Chris, go take as long as you need, whatever. And so I went home and I wrote furiously, like Jerry Maguire did for that business plan uh, in, in that movie. He got fired, though, Jerry Maguire. And then what I did uh, was I published this three days later. So I, I, went, I went into beast mode on this thing. And I'm humbled to say that Forbes called this uh, one of six books all entrepreneurs need to read right now. But most importantly, though, I set a deadline date and I got it done. And I want all of you to set aggressive goals this year as well. Okay. Um, so you can grow into the person uh, that you want to be and make them insanely, insanely hard to achieve. Because as James Cameron said, if you set your goals so high and you fail, you still fail above everyone else's uh, expectations. And if you want to write a book, uh, I've got a template you can use for free. I don't ask for your email or anything. Just go to my website, harunmba.com slash write book, all lowercase write book. Now, another goal that I want you all to have this year, this is out there, but it's fun, is I don't want you to care what other people think of you, okay? Now, here's a, a chart I made. I'm not a very good artist. Uh, but here on the x-axis is your age, and on the y-axis is give a darn. And when you're really young down here, you don't really care what people think of you. You have meltdowns in restaurants like I did. You just don't care. Then when you're up here and you're older like me, <laughs> um, you also don't care what people think. The problem is this, though. When you're in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, you're up here. You care what people think of you. And this destroys your life. I want you all for your news resolution to live at this level here. Okay. And so all the best entrepreneurs in the world, they live at this level right here as well. They don't care what people think. And I call this the triangle of despair. And you got to avoid that at all costs in your life. Because if you care what people think of you, and I'm not saying be rude or disingenuous, but if you're trying to live your life to, uh, to you know, get approval from others, you'll never be happy. And you'll always question yourself and it will destroy your confidence too. So what I want you to do is I want you to live at this level here in 2024. It works. It works. I promise you, it changes everything. And so your homework or shkudai, as we used to say in Japan, is this. 
I want you to get a pencil and a piece of paper. And I want you to write this down. I don't care what people think about X. And do that 10 times. And fill in the blank for X. I don't care what people think of my shirt. I don't care that people find out that I'm 51 years old and I still play video games. And I finished GTA 4 and one of the DLCs over the Christmas break. And by the way, in 2025, when GTA 6 comes out, I'm not doing these webcasts for a month, okay? I, I don't care, like Ricky Gervais. But I want you to do that, seriously. I don't want you to care what people think. Because if you really do care what people think of your occupation and your choices in life, you'll never be happy. You know, maybe you'll go to law school to, you know, make your parents happy and proud of you. But are there really any happy lawyers? Unless you're a civil rights lawyer, then I love you. I want you to live your life on your terms. That's your big goal for this year. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me get to your, your questions here. Thank you, everyone, for your, your patience with me today and the past couple of weeks I've been away. Um, all right. Let me kick it off with uh, Duwan who wrote, Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm always great. Thanks. Uh, good, good to see you. You wrote, How do consultants calculate their hourly rate that they charge clients? Yeah. Yeah. It all depends on who the client is. If it's a large firm, you have to charge a lot or they won't take you seriously. Now, I had a really good friend uh, named Saeed Amidi, and he uh, is one of the best venture capitalists in history. And when he was starting his company, he charged a very low fee for corporations to basically be a part of and see the company, the portfolio companies he had. He would charge only 5K. Nobody signed up. Then he changed it and he grew his business and he started charging couple hundred thousand and tons of companies signed up. So if you're targeting big companies, you have to charge a lot. Okay. In terms of your hourly rate, um, I would start at an absolute minimum of a hundred bucks. And when I worked at Accenture uh, back uh, in 1994 to 1998, when I was a developer, I remember I literally made $9 an hour after taxes. It was rough, but I lived well. I was living in Ottawa and I was charged out at over a hundred bucks per hour. People won't take you seriously if you charge too little, right? They'll, they'll question how good is your product. And when you sell, and I teach you about this, my MBA program, you know, once you mention what the price is, you stop talking. And once you sense that somebody is interested in your product or hiring you, for example, stop talking. Otherwise, you, you know, you're selling past the close. And if you keep selling once you, you, once you feel that somebody is interested in buying your product or service, this is exactly what they're going to be thinking. They won't say this, but they'll think this. Gosh, I really like this person. I like this product. Why do they keep selling it? I mean, they keep selling. Am I missing something? I'm not buying. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you're interested in finding out exactly what you should charge, and if you're just an army of one, you can always go to upwork.com to see what other people charge. Yeah. All right. All right, next up, uh, Dario. Good to see you, Dario. It's, it's been years. Great to see you, actually. Yeah. Uh, you wrote, Happy New Year. Same to you as well. Please write down your goals, everybody. And one thing I recommend for everybody is, as well is to please schedule every single day. Okay, and in my MBA program, I've got a, a daily scheduling system and a gazillion other templates that you can use. And when you schedule each day, I want you to write down your goals at the top here, okay, your North Star goals, and put in brackets a deadline date. If you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Make this one of your New Year's resolutions, please. Okay, so Dario wrote here, the SEC, I know I get questions on this. The SEC, the SEC approves an ETF related to Bitcoin. Amazing times to live through. Uh, I think that this could be a really good point for the company. Who's the custodian of Bitcoin? What's your idea on the topic? Yeah, I think it's a great idea longer term. Uh, but before you do that, what I would do is I would do a lot of research on Coinbase. So Coinbase Global uh, and Gemini uh, are two of the biggest custodial services out there. There might be a lot of startup fees as, as well. Uh, and if you do a search online for the top 25 uh, uh, Bitcoin custodial services, uh, you'll see a, a, a profile of all 25. Yeah. And before you launch that business or any business, what I want you to do um, is, is I want you to actually write a, a really detailed business plan. I had a, I had a helmet here. Where's that helmet? Damn it. Pretty good moments. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, as part of the venture, as part of the um, 
uh, as part of my uh, MBA degree program. Here it is. <clears throat> part of my MBA degree program. I've got a venture capital boot camp. It is in the third semester of four. Um, and what I do is I have you write a full business plan first because failing to plan is plan to fail. And I teach you how to anticipate any issues you might have in the business so you don't waste money starting the company. And if you start a company without doing your own due diligence and writing a thorough business plan, it can destroy your life. You know, it can basically <coughs> destroy your wealth, <coughs> your health, uh, etc. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, and then Dario wrote, it's your birthday in less than a month. Thank you. May this year be a milestone for your life. Thank you. And you wrote hugs. God, God bless you. I miss you. Uh, and, and one of my students, actually, uh, Jose uh, Leonardo, sent me this uh, for, for Christmas. Isn't that nice? The Haroon family. It's pretty cool. And I play Scrabble <coughs> a lot with my kids. And my youngest kid actually beat me <coughs> in, in Scrabble as, as well. Yeah. The older I get, the better I was. Carol, how are you? From Poland, uh, Carol wrote, hey there, happy new year, everybody. Uh, Bitcoin ETF has come out uh, indeed. Yeah, it's an incredibly positive uh, catalyst. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Alex, hey Alex, how are you? You wrote, is the Python uh, and finance courses online yet? Yeah, I just published them uh, and, and I'll show you how to get them and they're exclusively available for now uh, to my MBA students. Uh, so let, let me show this to you. Okay, so if you go over to uh, learn.haroonventures.com uh, and you scroll down, uh, you'll see that right here, uh, I've got the uh, chat GPT for investing in stocks uh, and the complete Python course. And these are only available for now uh, on my website and to my gold and platinum and silver students. Now, if you already signed up for my gold or platinum uh, or silver MBA degree program, if you go to the very last lecture in your curriculum, uh, you can get these here uh, for free. And you know what I'll do? Because I, I, I was working on with Luca Anderson hard uh, on creating this, uh, this Python course. And I spent over 500 hours just editing it. What I'll do is... Um, I think I'll play for you just a, a quick promo of it. Okay, so this is a world premiere of a, sh here's a short video that's available to my MBA students uh, on the Python course that I worked all year on last year. So I'll be right back, thanks. Welcome to our complete Python course where we will make Python fun and easy to learn using many props, many exercises, resources, and much more. This is one of the most up-to-date and thorough Python courses on the market because we discuss many powerful Python updates that were just released. Python is a beginner-friendly and it is one of the most important and independent programming languages to learn in order to take your company or career to the next level. Also included in this course is a free book that is only available to students that enroll in this course called The Complete Python Book. Now, there are four ways to take this very comprehensive Python course as follows. There's a beginner track, which assumes you have no experience with Python or coding in any programming language at all. Then there is an intermediate track for students with some experience in programming, but not in Python. Then there's also a genius track that assumes you have some Python experience, but you want to learn or revisit only more advanced Python topics. And there's an all track that assumes that you want to watch all lessons. Learning Python is like building a Lego set, one brick at a time, which is so much fun. Python is like the platform that we will learn the basics one by one brick at a time. Let's talk about the levels, meaning sections in this comprehensive course. There are 17 levels, meaning 17 sections of this course. In level one, we discuss an introduction to how to quickly start using Python so you can use it on any device when programming with us in this course. In level two, we will learn how to use data types, like text meaning strings or a number. Moving on to level three, where we will discuss how to use math in Python and how to string together data. In level four, we will learn how to use built-in Python functions. In this course, we will cover every single built-in Python function. In level five, we will discuss how to use the powerful and easy to use list data type. Then in level six, we'll learn how to use the logic like and and or when we code. We'll also learn how to use if statements, the for and while loops, as well as how to use the match and the case logic, which was released and introduced to Python in late 2021. In level seven, we will learn about three very important additional data collection types, which are tuples, dictionaries, and sets. And these data types will allow us to take our programming skills to the next level. 
Moving on to level 8 of 17, where we'll discuss how to use methods, which are things that we can do to change variables like make text uppercase. We'll also learn how to use advanced strings by learning how to use methods or things we can do with them. In level 9, we will learn about a type of programming called object-oriented programming where we can create reusable code in the form of classes. And think of classes as templates of code for making objects. And this will become much more clear as we progress together through level nine. Next up, we have a level 10, where we'll learn how to use and import something called numerical Python, which is also called NumPy, which is much faster than Python in many cases when working and creating with data in array formats. In level 11, we will learn about how to install and use pandas and polars in Python, which are incredible data analysis libraries. And pandas and polars are amazing for loading and analyzing data. Then in level 12 of 17, we'll learn about something called Introduction to Data Processing and ETL. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. In level 13, we will learn about how to write clean and efficient code. Now, this is a crucial skill set for developers because clean and efficient code runs much faster, which can help us to save a lot of time and money when it comes to using computer resources. And if we write clean and efficient code, it makes it easier for us and anybody reading the code in the future to read, debug, and maintain our code. In level 14, we'll learn how to use Python inside of Microsoft Excel. Why should we learn about using Python in Excel? Well because Microsoft has sold more than 1 billion copies of Excel since it was released. And although Python is much more powerful than Excel for data analysis, Excel is easy to use for quick data analysis and it is used by so many less tech-savvy senior executives. Next up we have level 15 and we'll learn about Mojo, which was released in 2023. Now, think of Mojo as Python on steroids or as they call it, a superset of Python. Why should we learn about Mojo? Because Mojo not only allows you to run Python much faster, but also as secure or safe as language such as Rust. Many developers are predicting that Mojo will be the future of AI development. In level 16, we will learn in alphabetical order how to use every single built-in Python function. Think of this level as an index that you can always refer back when you want to use some of these built-in Python functions. Knowledge of these built-in Python functions can help you work smarter and not harder when programming. Lastly, in level 17, we will add many new Python topics that you ask us to add. So that in the long run, level 17 will be the longest section of this very comprehensive course. Python is easy and so much fun to learn. One break, meaning one step at a time. We'll see you in the course. Thanks. We had so much fun making that course. I was actually really sad when it was over. It's kind of like when you when you read a book, you're proud of yourself when it's done, you put it on your bookshelf, but you kind of miss it. Speaking of books, there is a 900 page book version of the course available only in the course. And you can download it from the very first lecture. Again, if you're uh, MBA degree students or alumni, you can go to the very last lecture of the MBA curriculum, your MBA curriculum, and access all the electives. And I'm making tons more this year, tons more technology ones. And I'm also working very hard on a real estate course for the MBA program. And we had so much fun making that, that Python course, man. We, we used a ton of Legos as well. Uh, I love to use visuals uh, whenever I present, whenever I teach as well. It makes it easier and more fun to learn. Yeah. And my kids had a lot of fun helping me out with it as well. Okay, cool. All right, uh, next up, uh, Kevin, how are you? Uh, great, great to see you from Lakeland, Florida. Hope, hope you're doing well. Uh, then we have the vanquisher who wrote, am I supposed to work while I build my business or quit my job? I don't really know how to start. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I recommend doing, um, if you signed uh, in your contract with the company the fact that you can't have any side businesses, I'd make sure to look over that and maybe have your lawyer check it out. You can go to legalzoom.com and hire a lawyer for very cheap to check it out, check out your contract. But in terms of when do you quit? Well, I tell my students uh, that if you start a side hustle, what I want you to do is I only want you to quit your full-time job if the past six months of your revenue from your side hustle is greater than your annual salary. And we all know that if it's 
80% of your, your annual salary, you're going to quit anyway. And the reason why I say six months is because business is very seasonal. And the worst thing you can do is start a company in November and you have a massive December and then you quit. Because usually most companies have the greatest percent of revenue in December and sometimes November. So that's why I want you to look at a six month trailing basis. And I also don't want you to start your company until you write a thorough business plan, which as I mentioned earlier, we talk about in the third of four semesters uh, in my MBA program. God, my hair is short, man. I just got back from vacation, got a quick haircut. It's kind of short. Let me know, do you want my hair short or longer? What do you think looks better? Okay. All right, uh, next question is, uh, Carol wrote, uh, Chris, do we have our gold and platinum office hours today? Yes, we do. We have two hour office hours, all Zoom based. Uh, which will start at 11.20 a.m. today. And then I've got one-on-ones with Platinum students. Yeah, thanks. And, and check the calendar. I just put it in. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, Manas, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, Manas uh, from India, who wrote a great book called Bonds Before Business, which I bought. Uh, so Manas wrote, my mentor, uh, what a haircut, a lovely one. Okay, thank you. That's it. I'm keeping my hair short. Okay, thank you. Uh, but everyone else, give me feedback, long or short. Let, let me know. Um, uh, you wrote happy new year to you and you look great there. And yeah, the ETF is live. Uh, and let's get to a great year ahead. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that feedback. Please, everybody set your goals. And I want you all to share your goals with me as well. And what I want you guys to do, please, I want everybody in this call to write down one goal and then share it with us and put in brackets the deadline date. Okay. So it might be writing a book. Uh, it might be getting into better shape, whatever it is. And I'm, tr I'm trying to put on muscle as, as well. I'm working out a lot with, uh, with, with my kids. My kids can lift more than me now, my oldest one especially, yeah. And by the way, the best thing you can do for your kids, if you can do it, is buy a gym at home and put it in the garage. Because that way, you know, when they're teenagers, if they go down the wrong path, you lose them for life, yeah. The body is a temple. Okay. All right, next up, uh, Marin, uh, who, who started a great company called Skin Bell, uh, uh, wrote, uh, hi, Chris, hope yours uh, are well. Uh, great to see you. And uh, so Marin uh, is originally from Kenya. And as you all know, uh, last year we finished construction uh, of the school in Rwanda and the profits from my MBA program go towards funding schools all over the world. My goal, this is crazy, my goal is to build a thousand schools uh, in Africa in my lifetime using the profits from my courses and my MBA program. I want to die broke. <laughs> um, and uh, our next school we're actually building uh, in, in, uh, in Kenya. We're starting this year. We've secure, secured 10 acres uh, of land. It's a, a six hour drive from uh, the Nairobi airport. Uh, and we're doing it with, with Marin. And it's in honor of her mother. Uh, and the school is going to be called the, the Lea Koros uh, Memorial School for Girls. Uh, and stay tuned for more updates uh, later this year uh, on that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And you see how I threw out that goal of a thousand schools? Do you guys think I can do it? I don't know. I think so. At a minimum. And as Mark Benioff said, we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in a year. I certainly do. But we massively underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. And I'm going to make it happen. Excellent. And Marin, I'm looking forward to, to meeting your father, uh, Samson, Samson when, when I go to, to Kenya. Okay. Uh, next up, we got uh, uh, Gur uh, Simran. Uh, great to see you. Uh, uh, welcome to the call. First time I've seen you here. I hope you join us again. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too. Fox Boy wrote, Happy New Year. Same to you. Good, good to see you. Ooh, lots of questions here. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Nicholas Nicholas uh, wrote, uh, what are your thoughts on the Money Master, the game by Tony Robbins and the asset allocation he talks about, specifically the, the all seasons uh, strategy? Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Tony Robbins. I've not read that book, but I know that he speaks a lot with Ray Dalio uh, and the top uh, portfolio managers in the world in the hedge fund industry. In fact, he charges them $1 million for one day of consulting. Um, in terms of asset allocation, I recommend that you have no more than 5% of your liquid net worth, meaning aside from your house, have no more than 5% of your liquid net worth in any one particular stock. And I want you to have more than 20% of your liquid net worth in any one particular sector. And what I mean by that is no more than 20% in tech stocks, no more than 20% in healthcare stocks, 
rinse, lather, repeat. You get the idea. Yeah. And if you want, you can share with me a little bit more information on what Tony Robbins asset allocation is, his strategy, and I can give you my humble thoughts. Yeah. And I differ from people like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's brilliant, way smarter than me. Uh, and God bless Charlie Munger passed away recently. But Warren Buffett has about 40% of his portfolio in Apple. Great company, but I just don't feel comfortable putting all of my eggs in one basket. Okay. Pearl, thank you for that. Happy New Year to you as well. And to the entire HEV, meaning Haroon Education Ventures uh, family. Yeah. Okay, moving on to Dewan. Uh, Dewan wrote, uh, hi, Chris. Hey, as a business owner, how do we know what amount of cash should be in our bank account uh, for month-to-month -month expenses? Thanks. Yeah. Oof. You want to look at your, your burn rate. Um, and, and you want to make sure that you have at least six months of cash on hand, assuming that you'll have no revenue for the next six months. I know that's very conservative, but I'm very conservative whenever it starts, when, whenever it comes to cash flow. Yeah. And the way I teach you all to launch your companies uh, in my MBA program is I teach you how to do it without any employees. I like to use AI and software automation a lot. Um, so whenever you guys book meetings with me, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't have an assistant. It's just done through Calendly and then Zoom, et cetera. Yeah. And, and I use AI a lot now uh, for customer service. So if you go to my website, which is harunmba.com, uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a chat bot. And the chat bot is trained on over 11 million characters of the closed captions from my MBA degree program and other FAQs. Try it out if you can and give me some feedback. It's a beta product right now. Uh, I released it before it's ready because as uh, Reed Hoffman, the co-founder of LinkedIn said, if you release a product when it's perfect, then you've missed the mark. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, Life wrote here. Hi, Chris. Uh, after a long time joining your webcast, great to see you again. Uh, you wrote, hope you and your family are doing well. We're great. Thanks. I hope you and your family are well as well. You wrote, um, how's the election thing going in the United States? Which side is hotter and who do you think is going to win? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I have concerns on both sides, of course. In terms of am I a Republican or a Democrat? Well, I'm definitely a... And that's why I'm going to be voting for... Yeah, I'm just kidding. I, I never share my political preference. But um, for me, it depends. Like, I, I grew up um, in, in Canada and I love Ronald Reagan. Um, because he took down communism. Uh, and then I moved to the States and I thought, okay, great, I can vote Republican now. But I've gone back and forth. Yeah. Okay. But it's going to be, uh, it's going to be Trump versus uh, Biden if Biden stays in the race. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, you wrote, uh, it, it's true that ETFs make it easier for investors to buy gold on paper uh, but is it really legit? Uh, is it really going to have the same value as gold in the long run? Because things on paper uh, can be um, uh, manipulated. It all depends who you're buying it from. So I don't recommend buying uh, any Bitcoin ETF from a company that's not reputable. I want you to stick with the big ones. I want you to stick with uh, Vanguard, Schwab, uh, etc. BlackRock. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Carol wrote, congrats on finishing the Python course. Thank you. We, we had so much fun with it, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what we did actually is a way to work smarter, not harder, um, is I used this, this new AI product to caption the entire course. And then what I did was I went through all the captions to create this book. And you got to think that way. That's what Gary Vaynerchuk talks about. He's the quintessential social media expert out there. He talks about repurposing content so you can work smarter, not harder. So for example... This weekly webcast that I do, um, I have a bunch of contractors that'll go through the best questions asked, and then they'll take little videos, they'll edit them, and put them up on TikTok, uh, as well as LinkedIn and other social media platforms. And that's a way for us to repurpose content. So there's nothing left on this weekly webcast uh, a carcass by the time we're, we're done with it, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Carol wrote, uh, NumPy, Pandas, and Polars. I can see you went deep. Yeah, yeah. L Luke is amazing, man. Yeah, he's incredible. Okay, and we use a lot of pro Lego props as, as well. So this here is, is a snake. It's a Python snake. And the guy that created Python, he used to work at Google. Um, he basically, he loved Monty Python. He's got a great sense of humor, right? And this is from Harry Potter. But we also put pandas in. And for those of you not familiar with pandas and polars, 
Um, it's basically a way to use Python with larger data sets. Yeah, and we also included something called Mojo, uh, which is a gazillion times faster than Python. Yeah. Okay, accountant guy too uh, wrote, uh, hi Chris, hey. Can you please say a little bit about coaching services that you offer? I'm thinking about starting or buying a business. Would coaching uh, make sense uh, for me? Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to learn.haroonventures.com, uh, I have a, a coaching service there uh, you can check out. What you can do if you want is if you're interested in my coaching services or if anybody is interested in joining my gold or platinum program, before you buy, if you want, set up a Zoom call with me and we'll talk about whether it makes sense for you. Now, the way to set up a, a Zoom call with me is you go to uh, Haroon MBA slash FAQ. And if you scroll down uh, right to here, uh, you can book uh, a one-on-one -on -one with me right right here. So it's HaroonMBA.com slash FAQ, all lowercase. Yeah. And I'm happy to, to talk through that with you. Yeah. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my prices are going up uh, materially uh, starting in, in February of this year for everything. Yeah. Okay. Now, in terms of, of buying a business, uh, in my MBA degree program, you might be better off taking my, my cheaper uh, MBA degree program instead of the one-on-one -on -one consulting. Because in the MBA degree program, uh, what I do is I actually um, teach you how to do uh, research on any company. And I also teach you how to use AI uh, to do research on companies. And there's a course that I just put as an elective only for my MBA degree students uh, that will teach you how to do due diligence and create financial statements uh, on, on any company. And here's a, a, a very short promo uh, on that and how I use AI to help you do due diligence on, on companies. Again, what I'm about to show you, it's a short video uh, and it's uh, one of the many electives uh, in my MBA degree program. So I'll be right back. Thank you. In this course, we will teach you how to use AI products to help you create financial models and value companies. Now, this course is based on my knowledge of investing and thorough due diligence as I have work experience at Goldman Sachs and at the top hedge funds in the world and in the venture capital sector too, where I had a pre-IPO investment in Facebook in my company. I'm also partnering with Luca Anison uh, in this course as he is one of the leading AI experts and Google developers actually called him one of the top 150 machine learning and AI experts in the world. Together, we will teach you how to take your finance and investment skills to the next level using ChatGPT and other top AI products. In this course, we provide you with a massive research document with countless AI prompts that we created for you so that by the end of the course, you will run circles around the competition when it comes to doing financial accounting and quantitative research of any company using many AI products, including ChatGPT. Now, by the end of this course, you will also learn how to create a comprehensive financial model on any company and also how to value and find the target price for the company that you're doing research on. Attached to the first lecture of the course is a comprehensive financial and accounting report that we'll create together that analyzes every aspect of any company using AI so you can work smarter and not harder. Also attached to the first lecture of the course is an Excel spreadsheet that will help you create and forecast financial statements and value companies in seven steps. Now, if you don't have finance or accounting experience, no problem, as we will explain everything from scratch. And this course can help you become a better investor, a better corporate finance executive, a better investment banker, and it will help you with any finance or accounting career, whether you're just starting your career or you're already a very senior executive. By the end of the course, you will have a complete comprehensive financial analysis research report and financial models and valuation analysis of any company as we will create all of this together. We provide you with every prompt and all the tools that you need to analyze any company. We will also teach you how to use the top AI products to take your finance and investing career to the next level. And no prior business or accounting or finance experience is required to take this comprehensive course. We will see you in class. Thank you. All right, and here's behind the scenes of my, my messy office. Again, just got back from Hawaii. Uh, a little bit messy here, too many, too many props. Okay, uh, next up, Manas wrote, uh, uh, good morning, my dear mentor, great to see you. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm always great, thanks, and I hope you're doing well. 
Um, and then you wrote, uh, do you see the crypto community buzzing with hope and optimism? Yeah, it's incredibly, incredibly positive for cryptos. Yeah, I still believe, as I've said many times, that 95% of all cryptos are an absolute scam. And you got to do your due diligence first on any crypto you're going to invest in because the, the way it works is if you want to buy a stock, uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission makes you file these massive reports called S1s. These are the IPO documents. And then you have to file uh, you know, annual reports, quarterly reports, 8Ks, etc., for earnings and other material uh, information released to the public. The problem with cryptocurrencies is they're not regulated yet by the SEC. And I hope we get to a point where cryptocurrencies have to file these things as well. When that happens, I think it's going to be an even bigger catalyst than the ETF catalyst we're seeing right now. And this ETF catalyst is significant. And in my MBA program, I've, I've got a ton of tools you can use to actually write research reports as well on cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, later this year, uh, I'm going to release a real estate course as well for my, my MBA students. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Manas wrote, um, even an ETF for Ethereum and Ripple is coming out from BlackRock and Grayscale. Uh, uh, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So I, I've publicly disclosed uh, many times over the past decade. Uh, which four cryptos I own, which I'm never selling, uh, and always do your own research. And those four cryptos are as follows. Uh, I've got Bitcoin, I've got Ethereum, I've got Litecoin, and I've got Ripple. One of the reasons I like Ethereum is because it's a platform, and the best investments are platforms uh, like Apple or LinkedIn or eBay or Facebook. You own the road and you charge the cars, so to speak. One of the issues, though, with Ethereum that I've always had issues with when it comes to uh, thinking about the long-term viability of it um, is that there's no limit in terms of the supply in the long run. Yeah. And whenever you buy any investment, uh, I always want you to look at the underlying supply. And as my grandfather, who I miss, miss you, grandpa, used to always say to me, Chrissy, buy land. They're not making it anymore. Yeah. But Ethereum is great because it's where NFTs are made uh, on that platform. And it's where uh, uh, cryptocurrencies go IPO or ICO. Most of them, at least 70% of them. Yeah. The biggest tech trend uh, that's making me very excited right now is the Apple AR product. And so Apple is going to allow us to start purchasing uh, their AR product uh, on uh, January 19th at 5 a.m. online, 5 a.m. Pacific time. Yes, I am getting up early for that. I'm a nerd, I know. Uh, and then they go on sale. You'll be able to actually get them on February 2nd. So I'm going to buy it. Um, I'm going to be a first mover um, and I'll bring it on to this webcast just to show you what it looks like. Yeah, I can't wait. And if anyone's going to nail uh, VR and AR, it's going to be Apple. Now, the problem is the device is going to be way too expensive initially. But the biggest issue uh, with AR and VR devices is motion sickness. And Facebook with Oculus, they signed a, a 20 plus billion dollar contract with the Department of Defense. So the Department of Defense in the United States could use Oculus for military training. And 80% of employees in the Department of Defense that use those products, the Oculus product, they said they got motion sickness. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, Dane wrote, uh, have you thought about dreadlocks? Uh, they would look great on you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My hair, when it gets long, it's all wavy and stuff. Yeah. The longest I ever had it actually was, was down to here. Uh, back in the, the early 90s, uh, in the mullet days. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next up, uh, Mindy uh, wrote, Hi, Chris. Uh, love the haircut. Uh, thank you. Would you mind explaining uh, the GPTs uh, on chat uh, GPT? Yeah. So, in terms of, of what GPT stands for, I think the T stands for Transformer. Uh, which is something that, that Google actually developed in-house many years ago. Uh, and, and Google's had a lot of problems with their AI product. Uh, they released BARD uh, last year. Uh, it's not nearly as good as Bing Chat uh, or ChatGPT itself, but it's getting better. It's getting better. And when you use BARD, and you can't use it in every country. So for example, in Canada, you can't use BARD yet. But when you use Google BARD's product, please double check the data. Always, always, always. It's the worst of all the big AI companies when it comes to hallucinations. Yeah. And whenever you guys use ChatGPT, 
uh, or Bing Chat uh, or, or any AI product, I always want you to have a, in the prompt that you ask, provide me with a source okay, and a web link and double check all the data. Always, please. Yeah. And, and a couple of months ago, I had Brent Thill, uh, who's the number one software and internet analyst on the planet, uh, on the webcast. Uh, and, and I asked him on this weekly call, um, does your team use uh, AI products like ChatGPT for investment research? He said, not yet. Not yet. Because of the hallucinations. Okay. Manas wrote, uh, today I was informed that two of my newest courses on AI and ChatGPT are now the highest rated on Udemy. Awesome. A big thank you to you uh, and the HEB family. Forever big credit to y'all. Congratulations, man. Nicely done. Okay. Next up, uh, Meet the Requirements, uh, MTR, uh, wrote here, good morning from Jersey. Great to see you. Uh, that's where Bruce Springsteen is from. One of my favorite singers ever. Uh, and then you wrote here, uh, what are your thoughts on a hedge fund becoming uh, LPS uh, in venture funds? Yeah. Uh, let me know what you mean by LPS, that limited partners. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I'll say is, is this. Um, so a lot of hedge funds were underperforming last decade. And one of the reasons why hedge funds were underperforming is because ETFs came out. A lot of investors just wanted to buy ETFs. And as a result of ETFs becoming very popular, the correlation between stocks was very, very high. So it was hard to generate alpha or beat the market for hedge funds. And so what hedge funds decided to do last decade was they decided to start investing in private companies. And that's what I do with my hedge fund too. I kind of morphed it into a venture capital firm. And I had an investment uh, in Facebook uh, in my fund many years ago. Yeah. Uh, but and, and another reason why hedge funds started investing in, in venture capital investments is because private tech companies were staying private longer before doing, going public. So instead of going public at a market cap of $1 billion, private companies would go public at a market cap of 10, 20, 50, $100 billion. Uh, and so a lot of the alpha or, or performance, uh, the best performance uh, was in venture capital funds that held stocks until IPO. And so hedge funds started entering the private markets as well. And that's a problem because a lot of hedge funds drove up the valuation big time uh, on a lot of private uh, tech companies to the extent that when the companies went public, you didn't see that one day pop of 30, 40, 50% like you usually do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you wrote here, I'm an ed tech founder. Me too. I'm looking to exit uh, and manage a, a hedge fund. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, when it comes to, to launching a hedge fund, make sure you talk to a securities lawyer. And this goes for everybody that wants to start any company. Make sure you register the company. Uh, and then you, if you're going to raise money, you need to have a securities lawyer write up these Inf, uh, these uh, these uh, 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 these 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 IPO documents or investor offering memorandums. Yeah. You didn't get much sleep last night, sorry. Yeah, and if you want, you can use my lawyer, who I use for my hedge fund. Uh, his name is Jim Grant uh, from the Securities Law Group here in the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay, Mateo, how are you? Oh my God, it's been a while. Uh, you wrote, how are you doing? I'm great. Uh, great to see you as well. I have a son named Matthew as well. You wrote, hope you're good, likewise. Uh, and, and Matthew, by the way, I'm sure you know this. It's Hebrew for gift from God. Uh, you wrote, uh, what are your thoughts on the Columbia Value Investing Program? Uh, do you think it's worth the money? Yeah, yeah. So uh, at Columbia University, that's where I graduated my MBA in finance eight million years ago. Um, There's an amazing professor uh, named uh, Greenwald. Uh, and he is kind of the grandfather of value investing along with Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett actually went uh, to Columbia Business School as well uh, because of the value investing program there. Only do it if you want to be a very, very long-term uh, investor. And, and I remember I took Greenwald's class. Um, it was in late, two, late 1999. I was in his class. There's 300 students. And he cold called me and he said, uh, what stock are you investing in now? And I told him eBay. And I pitched it and he tore me to shreds. And it ridiculed me in front of everybody. It was awful. I remember calling my girlfriend, my wife, Christine, uh, at night that day saying, oh my God, he tore me to shreds. It was so embarrassing. Um, and 
I butted heads with him only because I'm more of a growth investor, right? He said, why would you buy eBay? It's trading at a million times earnings. It was a great investment. I stuck with it. Thank God. Yeah. But when you value companies, what I want you to do is I want you to look at the earnings for the company in five or 10 years. Okay. Uh, and then what I want you to do is I want you to value the company uh, based on your earnings estimates in five or 10 years. What I'll do right now is I'll play you a video uh, that I created on how to value companies. Please keep typing your questions. I'll be right back. Thank you. This is me with long hair. Well, there's several different ways to value companies. The first way I want to talk about is my favorite way, which is price to earnings, which is valuing a company based on how much it's going to make in the future. Before we go there, what I want to do is I want to tell you how to understand financial ratios in the easiest way possible. For the rest of your life, whenever you see a fraction, I want you to always think the denominator as being the number one. So what does that mean with respect to PE? Well, what that means is, and what I'll do is, <clears throat> I'll also show you how Coca-Cola is valued uh, with a case study very, very soon. So a PE ratio means for every $1 on denominator, how many, how many times that $1 are investors willing to pay? So this is the denominator, which is one. It's always one forever, remember that. And the numerator in this case is 10. So what this means is for every $1 in earnings, okay, investors are willing to pay 10 times that $1, okay, $10 for each $1 in earnings. And so if a company is growing a lot faster, uh, then what happens is investors will pay more than 10 times. They might pay 20 times. And so the faster a company is growing, the higher the price to earnings. So how do you value a company then? Like, how do you know what to value a company at? Well, the rule, uh, the rule that people use is they use what's called a peg ratio. Now, historically, the S&P 500 trades at about 15 times earnings, meaning for every $1 in earnings, investors are paying 15 times or 15 bucks. Hi there. <laughs> so what happens is the average company in the S&P, historically speaking, grows earnings at 15%. So 15 times earnings divided by 15% is number one. Remember that. Okay, and that's a price earnings to growth ratio of one. So if a company is growing at faster than 15% earnings, then it should trade at higher than 15 times earnings. So a company that's growing at say 20% earnings, okay, should trade at 20 times earnings. Okay, and this is not a perfect benchmark, but it makes it a lot easier to understand this stuff. So a company that's growing at only 10% should only trade at 10 times earnings. And this is called the price earnings to growth rate. Okay, a peg ratio. So let's look at an example now with, with Coca-Cola. Right, so how do investors value Coca-Cola? Well, we have to look at the PE of Coke and look at the earnings growth as well. And this will not be a perfect science, but I want to do this to impress upon you how easy it is to value companies if you use the price earnings to growth uh, methodology. So if a company is growing at 10 is, is valued at 10 times earnings, growth is usually 10%. So let's go to Coca-Cola together. And as always, we'll go to my, my favorite free website, which is finance.yahoo.com. Okay. And the ticker for Coke right here is KO. All right, so Coke right now is trading at 25 times earnings. So let's go and actually look at the financials of Coke here. So we can see right here, okay, this is last year and the year before. We can see right here that Coca-Cola's earnings per share are $2.25 in 2021. And in 2020, it was $1.79. Alexa, what's 2.25 divided by 1.79? 2.25 divided by 1.79 is approximately 1.257. 1 1.25. So that's about 25% growth. Now, in reality, people look at forwards earnings, not backwards earnings. But this explains it to you. And so a lot of hedge funds, what they'll do is if a company is trading at way above its earnings growth rate, they'll look to short that company, meaning make money if it goes down. Going Buying a company means going long. Shorting a company is the opposite of that. And so the rule that a lot of hedge funds use is if the PE is twice the earnings growth rate, 
then it's probably a short. For example, if a company is trading at 10 times earnings, but earnings are only growing at 5%, then it trades at twice the growth rate and it might be a short. Okay, so we talked about price to earnings. Let's now move on to price to revenue. Price to revenue is really, really similar to price to earnings, except in the denominator, you've got revenue. And remember the denominator is always one. So if a company has a price to revenue rate of say 20 times, that means for every $1 in revenue it has on the denominator, investors are paying 20 times that $1 in, in revenue. And you do this if a company is not yet profitable. And so a lot of people ask me, hey, what is the going rate? Like, why should I value a company at 15 times revenue or 10 times revenue or 20 times revenue? How do I know? Well, it all depends on the growth rate of that company and the sector. My favorite way to value companies, though, is to look at my PE multiple based on my earnings estimates in five or 10 years. And I remember when I used to work in the hedge fund market, I was long LinkedIn, ticker LNKD, before Microsoft bought it and destroyed it. That's right. And I was also long Amazon. And people would tell me, Chris, you're crazy to own those stocks. Those are widow makers. They both trade at well over 100 times earnings. And I would say, no, they trade at three times earnings. And they would say, what does that mean? Well, I would say they trade at three times my earnings estimates in 10 years. So this is how growth investors stomach the volatility of really expensive companies based on this year's earnings. They value them based on their earnings estimates in five or 10 years. And this is something I teach in a lot more detail in my MBA degree program. Go to HaroonMBA.com for more details. All right, let's talk about the third way to value companies. And I'll talk about government policy and the Berlin Wall and why I have this, this here. The third way to value companies is DCF, discounted cash flow. And I don't like using DCF because there's a lot of independent variables when you, when you value a company based on DCF. And what that means is you value a company based on how much cash you think that company will make every single year into the future. Then you discount all that into today's terms. The reason I don't like using DCF is because between years one and 10, you can forecast that. But then 95% of the valuation usually for DCF is something called the terminal value, which is between years 11 and infinity. And there's so many independent variables too when you discount that future cash into today's terms, something called the weighted average cost of capital. And so garbage in, garbage out. If I tell you X plus one equals three, what is X? It's two, of course. If I tell you X plus one plus three plus pencil plus remote control from air conditioner equals one, what, what is X? We have no idea, too many independent variables. So what the heck am I doing having a piece of the Berlin wall right here? And I got this at Checkpoint Charlie a couple of years ago. The reason I have this is a lot of people don't understand or they might question governments for giving money to Ukraine and other countries trying to fight communism. Well, if we don't do that, then the economic impact will be horrific for us longer term. So according to a lot of the top investment banks and economists, the economic impact, you know, not to mention the awful loss of human life, but the economic impact from Russia invading Ukraine is going to be $2 trillion by 2023. We're all feeling it. The global economy would have had a nice soft landing in early 2022, but Putin screwed things up. So I think that within a decade, the economic impact of not fighting communism is going to be at least $10 trillion. So what does this have to do with discounted cash flow? Why am I mentioning this? Because if countries don't help Ukraine, then the long-term economic impact will be catastrophic to everybody. Hopefully that explains DCF uh, in, in a nutshell uh, and, and target prices as well. Big shout out to uh, Jean, uh, Jean-Marco Lubiana for doing a great job editing my videos. And if you want, you can follow me on TikTok as well. Uh, we don't publish daily vlogs uh, on, on YouTube, but we do on TikTok. Yeah, and we've seen tremendous growth on TikTok. John Marco's doing a great job. All right. And if anybody wants to hire Jean Marco, uh, let me know. I'm happy to send you his contact details. All right. Next up, I got uh, Jonas who wrote, uh, Hi, Professor Chris and fellow attendees. A very happy 2024 to all. And I hope uh, you and your family uh, are well. Uh, thank you very much for that other comment you left there. Appreciate it. Make sure you all write down your goals, okay? And share your goals with us. Like I mentioned earlier, please, people. I love you guys, your family. Write down your goals here in YouTube chat and put in brackets when you're gonna accomplish them. Bye.
Okay, it might include writing a book like Manas wrote. Uh, and his book, again, is called uh, Bonds Before Business. Speaking of Manas, he wrote here, uh, will ETF push in the trillion dollars of cash from Wall Street into cryptos? It's weird because every crypto can somehow get an ETF now. Uh, is this the way, the rule? Um, yeah. So I still only recommend, this is just me, uh, investing in cryptocurrencies that are established and have been around for a long time and do your own due diligence first. So I'm very bullish on Bitcoin longer term, uh, as you know. One of the reasons I'm bullish on cryptos or on, on Bitcoin is not just because of ETFs, but more importantly, because a lot of countries are no longer in the long run uh, going to be uh, investing in U.S. dollars. For example, the, the Chinese government, um, they're going to buy fewer U.S. dollars, fewer treasuries in the long run. They'll still buy a lot of treasuries. So what are they going to buy instead? Well, they'll probably buy a lot of gold. And what's digital gold? It's Bitcoin. Yeah. In terms of trillions of dollars of cash, not for a long time. Not for a long time. We won't get to that level for a long time, but I am incredibly bullish on Bitcoin a longer term, especially because there's a dearth of supply. There'll never be more than 21 million Bitcoins uh, ever created. And that'll be by the year 2140 when all the mining is is, is done. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Louise wrote, uh, how do I start an e-commerce company without a, a product? Yeah. You don't have to have a product to, to start a company. You can have what's called an MVP, a minimum viable product. Uh, and so, for example, uh, years ago, when I worked in the venture capital sector, uh, we co-invested on a deal with a, a big venture capital firm called Kleiner Perkins. I went to their headquarters a couple of times, uh, and I actually saw Al Gore there, and I got to meet with John Doerr, <coughs> who's one of the, the best VCs in history. But when I was there, I, I met with a guy named uh, Randy Komisar. And Randy Komisar uh, invested in Nest. And then Kleiner Perkins uh, sold Nest to Google. Google bought the company. Uh, for about $3 billion. And Nest, for those of you not familiar with it, uh, is a company that makes those thermostat products. And so I met with Randy and, and I asked him, how the heck did you know that this company was going to work out well? I mean, how great was the product when you saw it? And he said, well, they didn't have a product. And I was like, well, why did you invest? Uh, and he told me that uh, they brought a, a block of wood in, right? This is my, my makeup thing. Maybe I'm beautiful. Maybe it's Maybelline. But they brought in a block of wood and said, this is what the product's going to look like. And I said, well, why did you invest? He said, because the quality of the management team was incredible. They could sell with passion. They were incredible uh, en uh, engineers and entrepreneurs as well. And so a, a lot of times what happens is venture capital firms and sophisticated angel investors, what they do is they look for a great management team because they know that the product and the market that that company is participating in is going to change materially over time. But they want to see if the entrepreneur can get them excited about the product, kind of like Mark Benioff did with cloud computing or Sir Richard Branson with a gazillion products. And so the bottom line is the jockey is more important than the horse and venture capital firms and sophisticated investors would always rather invest in an A management team with a B business model instead of a B management team with an A business model. Yeah. So you don't have to have a product. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. And, and as Salvador Dali said, I have a problem with this. Um, he said, if you strive for perfection, you'll, you'll never reach it. And I, I really do believe that. And, and, and one of my many issues I've had in my career, uh, even now, is I try to make things perfect and I might potentially miss the market because of that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Manas wrote, thank you for everything, my mentor, Chris, please. Uh, see you uh, next week and forever and ever. God bless your family forever and ever. Thank you. You too. Good. And thank you for those emojis. God bless you. Namaste. Love you. Okay. Uh, Prashant, how are you? It's been a while. I hope you're doing well. Uh, you wrote here, are you planning to add cloud computing uh, in the near future? Yeah, absolutely. So we're working on right now, and I'm partnering with, with Luca Anderson uh, on doing AWS and Azure courses uh, is, as well. Yeah. And since I launched the MBA many years ago, since day one, I've always told my students in my MBA program, this is going to be the most up-to-date uh, and relevant MBA program on the planet. And when new technologies are released, I will learn these new technologies if I think it can be added to your career. And I will add them as electives. And so in just the last year, what I've done is I've created a new technology pillar as part of the MBA degree program. There are six pillars. And just over the past year, I've added a massive Excel course that teaches you everything about Excel, 
every menu item, every icon, everything, yes? As well as how to program in Excel. Over the past year, I've also added to the MBA degree program uh, a Python course, which I just published. And for those of you in my MBA program, you can go to the very last lecture to access it, including the 900-page book version of the course. I've also added a number of AI courses as well. And this year, we're working on a bunch of other courses that I think are going to be additive to your career. Because as I look at my, my, my kids, they're older now. Um, this guy here is in Berkeley, and this guy here will be in university next year. He just got into McGill, which is my, 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 my undergrad, my alma maters. But as I look at my kids, the technologies and jobs and the way they communicate with each other has not been invented yet. And when this stuff is invented, if it's additive to your career, I will work day and night 24-7 to add it to the MBA degree curriculum, which is always going to be up to date. And ChatGPT was only released in November of, you know, 2020-22. And I've already added a number of courses in that area. Yeah. It's so exciting to teach. I love it. Especially using prompts. Okay. Uh, Mindy wrote, uh, hi, what do you think of NVIDIA stock? I'm very bullish on the long term uh, for NVIDIA. You know, I, I own the stock um, in size, actually. Um, I have pared back the position uh, quite a bit. It's had a good run. Uh, as much as I love AI, I do think it's a bit overhyped from an investment perspective. Yeah. And I think uh, investors are going to start looking at uh, other secular growth markets. Yeah. I love AI. I think that it's the most important paradigm shift we see in technology since the internet was commercially made available in 1994. Uh, but I think it's a little bit overhyped right, right now. Yeah. But I, I am looking right now at smaller cap uh, chip stocks like AMD, et cetera, uh, and doing due diligence on that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys can, uh, what I would do if I worked uh, at a big tech hedge fund, what I would probably be doing right now is I'd be looking at what components are in this Apple VR AR product? What chip companies, for example? And maybe doing research on that. Yeah. Yeah. And you can look at smaller GPU companies as well, uh, not just uh, NVIDIA, which has had a, a big run already. Yeah. But I am bullish on the company longer term. Oh my gosh. Uh, Mark, who goes by Satons, who writes in all caps, I love you, man. Please always do that. I smile when I see it because you remind me of my grandfather. Uh, he used to write emails to me in all caps. And he wasn't yelling at me. But you wrote here, uh, uh, and Mark is from uh, uh, Michigan, wrote, Happy New Year, brother, uh, and the Global NBA gang. Great to see you, man. Great to see you. And I hope to see you later on today, if you want, uh, on the two-hour uh, Zoom call for Platinum and Gold students. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next next up, uh, Nicholas wrote, uh, the All Seasons portfolio. Oh, yeah, I asked you earlier uh, about what Tony Robbins was referring to in his book, Money Masters, with the All Seasons portfolio. So the all seasons portfolio is 30% total stock market, 40% long-term bonds, 15% intermediate bonds, 7.5% commodities, 7.5% gold. Yeah. For me, I, I, I respect Tony Robbins uh, and the billionaires that he talks to when it comes to uh, his financial tips. But for me personally, I don't like having more than 5% of my liquid net worth in any one particular security. So gold, I would probably have at a maximum of 5%. Um, now, when it comes to, to ETFs, I'm not sure what ETFs he's referring to there for the total stock market. Um, I wouldn't have more than 20% in any one particular ETF. When I'm not sure where to put my money, I put it into the VU ETF. Now, when I talk about the 5% maximum position, I mean 5% in any one particular investment. ETFs, you kind of get a, a hall pass there uh, because they are somewhat diversified. Yeah. But I'd also have uh, exposure uh, to uh, international equities as well. Uh, and I'll talk about bonds in, in, in a second. Now, in terms of how do you select ETFs to invest in? Well, the best website I like to go to is ETFdatabase.com, ETFDB.com. And what you can do here is uh, you can look at uh, an ETF screener by geography if you want to. Uh, you can slice and dice any way you want. So there's over 5,000 ETFs here. So for example, if you want to invest in Brazil, and I think we all need international exposure, uh, you can click here and you can invest in the EWZ, for example, which is right here. So you can get exposure to Brazil and different markets. You always want to make sure you look at number one, the expense fee uh, ratio, make sure it's you know 0.5% or below. 
And you also want to look at liquidity. Now, here with the Brazil uh, ETF ticker EWZ, as we say in Canada, uh, the biggest holdings uh, are, you know, commodity companies like Petrobras, uh, et cetera, Petroleum Brazil uh, and other commodity companies. Yeah. But I make sure you have international exposure as well. You don't want to be too exposed to, to the U.S. dollar. Yeah. Uh, in terms of bonds, um, I don't know. Like the way I think about bonds personally uh, is it's a relatively low risk investment if you invest in A rated or above. Never invest in anything that's junk status, meaning below A grade. Uh, and the way I think about it, and this is kind of old school, is you take your age and then what you do is you decide um, 100 minus your age and then you decide uh, how much you want to put in the bonds. So 100 minus 80, say you're 80 years old. 100 minus 80 is 20 so that means 80% of your investment should be in low risk A or AAA rated bonds. If you're 25 years old, 100 minus 25 uh, is, is, uh, is 75. So only you know 25% of your investment should be in, in low risk bonds uh, and 75% in you know growth equities. Yeah, because they, they are riskier growth equities, but you've got a long time to make up for it if you don't if you lose money early on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, life wrote. Yeah, I think uh, crypto regulations are very important if we really want them to replace the paper currency. Yeah. There are many pump and dump schemes going on uh, Telegram channels uh, where they trap people and run away. Yeah. You know, I, I hear you. And just this past week, somebody pretended to be me uh, on, on Twitter and was trying to scam people out of cryptocurrencies. If you ever get a message from me, on any platform, Instagram, et cetera, saying buy cryptos through me, you know it's a scam. Yeah, yeah. And report it to me as well, and we'll get those people taken down. Yeah. yeah. And I'm out now verified on Twitter, Instagram, and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you wrote, uh, everyone is trying to scam each other. Yeah. There's so many scammers out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And meet the requirements, wrote LPs. Uh, is limited partners when you asked that question earlier on about hedge funds investing in venture capital, meaning hybrid funds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, Ajit wrote, are the lectures taught live uh, on the gold MBA? Yeah. So what I do is this. Um, so every class, there's three lectures. So I play a video, kind of like I did a couple minutes ago for that, that vlog on valuation. I play a video and I stop and I answer questions live. Yeah, and I answer all questions. And I do that three times for every class. Yeah. Okay. So it ends up being a couple hundred hours of me doing Q&A in addition to the three to 500 hours of the MBA degree uh, program. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Mark wrote here, is it better to invest in public or private companies? Uh, the due diligence process seems so much easier. Do I also need a Series 65 to create a team to buy 10% of small caps? Thanks. Yeah. You don't need any designation, Series 65, 63, or 7, et cetera, to buy stocks. You don't need that. Yeah. But if you are going to become a broker dealer and sell securities, you might need to get that. Talk to a securities lawyer, please. In terms of, of what's better to invest in private or public uh, investments, definitely public. And the reason I say that is because liquidity is not an issue. Only invest in liquid securities, meaning ones that trade a lot, so you can get in and out if need be quickly, right? When it comes to buying private companies, they're illiquid. You're, you're a stuck holder. It's hard to get out of them. In fact, uh, in venture capital, only 1% of investments from the top, top 10 venture capital firms in the world become unicorns, meaning $1 billion companies or more. Now, Sequoia, if you're lucky enough to invest in Sequoia, and I partnered with Sequoia before. They led the A round in a company called Cohesity. We led the B round. I had a board seat there for a while before I quit to start my company. But Sequoia, 5%, 5% of their investments become unicorns. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely stick with public. Okay. Robert wrote, does purchasing the silver package give us access to all the on-demand courses? Uh, yeah, all the electives. Yeah, all the electives. And if you purchase silver um, every single week uh, on Thursday from 10 until 11, uh, I do a weekly Zoom, one hour Zoom call with my silver students. And for those of you in my silver MBA degree program, you can always get that link from the very first lecture. 
uh, of the uh, the curriculum. And of course, the past two weeks, I've, I've been away on vacation. Yeah, I just got back. Okay. And for anybody interested in buying my, my silver, gold, or platinum MBA degree program, if you don't think you're getting at least a 10x return on your investment in the first 30 days, I want you to ask for your money back. I've got a 30-day, 100% money back guarantee. I don't think any other MBA degree program has that. Yeah. And again, prices are going up materially uh, starting in February for all of my courses in MBAs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mindy wrote, in your opinion relating to a stock, is the one-year estimate target in Yahoo Finance for a stock price uh, valid or not? Uh, no, it's not. Um, I want you to always value companies based on your earnings estimates in five or 10 years. And in my, my MBA degree program, what I do is I teach you how to create financial models. Um, and actually I have a book coming out that McGraw Hill is publishing uh, called, um, it's part of their essential series. It's called uh, 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 Finance Essentials for, for Managers. That'll be out in April, yeah. That's the cleaning staff upstairs, yeah. I told them not to come on Thursdays, that's okay. Okay, Renvir from Mauritius, how are you? Uh, Renvir wrote, Happy New Year, Chris. I wish you even more success uh, this year. Thank you, great to see you. I'm looking forward to chatting with you at 10 a.m. today. Uh, that's in 45 minutes on the Weekly Silver uh, Zoom call. Great to see you, buddy. Okay, Motivation Station uh, wrote, uh, I graduated uh, with a computer science undergraduate degree in 2022. I'm thinking of starting an undergraduate degree in economics just for learning. Uh, what's your take? Yeah. So my candid answer always is this for anybody thinking about going back to university. What I would do is, first of all, question why you want to do that. Is it because you want to get a job in a different sector? If so, what I want you to do is this. I want you to set up 100, that's right, 100 informational meetings with people that work at companies you want to work at. And I explained how to do that in my MBA degree program in the first couple classes. And if after 100 meetings, informational meetings, you still can't change careers, then yes, go back to university. Yeah. Um, and think of each meeting that you take as saving you $1,000. Hear me out. So the cost of a, an MBA program from a top 10 school uh, is about $100,000 over two years. So if you do 100 informational meetings, take 100 times 1,000, that's $100,000. And if you can change careers by doing informational meetings, then don't go back to school. Yeah. And by the way, little, little side notes. Every time you see a job opening uh, online, you literally have a one in 250 shot of getting that job. So who gets that job? Well, it's ultimately the person that knows someone at that company. So if these are the new unwritten rules of commerce, then you got to network like crazy to get informational meetings at the company you want to work at uh, and get a job that way. And again, in the first semester, the first couple of classes actually uh, of the MBA degree program, Silver, Gold, and Platinum, I talk about how to network on steroids. Yeah. And your network is your net worth and relationships are always more important than product knowledge. Okay, Ralph wrote, uh, hey Chris, happy new year, uh, 2024 to you and your family. Thank you, Ralph, you, you too, yeah. Okay, uh, and then you wrote, I, I would like to get access to my MBA account, please, I emailed you. Sure, thank you, yeah, just email support at haroonventures.com and somebody will get back to you quickly, thank you. Okay, uh, Renvir wrote, do you think the metaverse trend might come back with the Apple Vision Pro? I do, I do, yeah. Uh, investors are starved for new uh, technology, uh, secular investment trends. Uh, I think the AI boom was kind of a little bit overdone. It's a new year uh, and portfolio managers and analysts are pitching new ideas uh, to uh, uh, to their investors, to their PMs, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, but people are gonna be very critical of the pricing points uh, on this Apple AR slash VR product. You know, Apple's not first to market, but I think if anybody's going to nail it, it'll be them. Again, I will be buying that product. Hopefully I can get it um, when I order it at 5 a.m. on January 19th. Uh, and hopefully I get it in my hands by February 2nd. So at the first or second week uh, of February, I can demo the product to all of you. Yeah. And I am a nerd, as you know. Okay. Hey, Ted, how are you, man? It's been a while. You wrote, God bless, Chris. Uh, you're the best. Thank you. God bless you more. And every day when I get up, 
Uh, before I get out of bed, I always thank God for 10 things in this order. My kids, Andrew, Matthew, uh, Dylan, uh, my wife, Christine, my mom, my dad, my brother, Jamie, my sisters, Katie and Elizabeth, and all of you, my students. Thank you, and I am grateful. Yeah. Because when one teaches, two learn. Okay, Ren Beer wrote, is there a way I can get my hands on Huawei stocks? Uh, seems like uh, there's no ETF in Huawei. Yeah, I'm not comfortable personally investing in that company. Um, and I can tell you why uh, during the silver uh, office hours today. I'll tell you in a lot of detail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, Fox Boy wrote, is there a real estate investing course or an e-commerce course uh, in the MBA uh, program? Yeah. So in, in the MBA degree program, there's a ton of technology uh, electives. Um, and I cover every major topic there is in business. One thing that's that's missing I do talk about real estate with respect to investing in REITs, mortgages, et cetera, in the MBA program, but I'm adding a very comprehensive uh, real estate elective this year to the MBA degree program. And that will be out, here I go, I'm setting a deadline date. That will be out by November 1st of this year. I set a deadline date, which means I have to make it possible. Yeah. And remember, when you all set your New Year's resolutions, set a deadline date. Okay. Uh, Renvir wrote, how do I do research on the next uh, metaverse stock? Uh, tell you what, ask me today at 10 a.m. in our, our Zoom call, and I'll, I'll go into a lot of detail on that with you. Yeah. Yeah. But wh what I would do is I probably, as I mentioned earlier, I probably do a teardown with respect to looking at what components are in uh, the Apple VR or AR product uh, and then go from there. Yeah. Okay. Fred Mendoza, oh my goodness, it's it's been a while. Great to see you, Fred. I graduated from my platinum program uh, years ago. Uh, great to see you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I think you're you're from the Baltimore area uh, as well, and you work in the healthcare industry. Yeah, good to see you. You wrote, Happy New Year, Professor Chris. Same to you. Uh, do you have uh, private banking like J.P. Morgan Private Bank? Also, what do you think of infinite banking? I don't know what infinite banking refers to. If you want, provide a little bit more color on that, uh, and and I'll, I'll 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 give you my humble thoughts uh, in terms of private banking. I do, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you want, uh, join us today during the two-hour gold and platinum uh, MBA degree program office hours over Zoom, starting at eleven twenty a.m. Uh, and I can go into a lot more detail on my private banking stuff if you're curious. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Bishnu wrote, uh, hey, Chris, uh, great to, uh, to hear from you again. Now I'm ready to continue my MBA program that I was unable to complete due to uh, personal obligations. Yeah. Uh, and I hope everything's okay with you. Uh, if you want, just send an email to support at haroonventures.com and I'll take care of you. No additional fees, of course. And, and once you sign up, anybody signs up for the MBA program, you never pay another dime to me ever again. You got everything included for free forever. Uh, again, uh, I do have to disclose this, that prices are going up for all my products materially uh, starting this this February. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, next up, uh, uh, Kamal wrote, uh, any experience investing uh, in RICs? Nope. Or BDCs? Nope. Seems like they have similar requirements uh, like REITs. I, I don't. But with respect to REITs, so if you don't have access to uh, real estate investments, meaning if you don't own your house, or your apartment or vacation home, whatever it might be, or rental property, uh, then what you can do is invest in REITs. So for those who are not familiar with REITs, REITs stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And it's basically like a mutual fund or ETF uh, to invest in real estate properties. Uh, and by law, a lot of REITs have to pay out 90% of their profits in terms of dividends. And so REITs usually have high dividends. Don't ever invest in a company with an insanely high dividend yield though, like 20 or 30%, because that might be a one-time dividend, or it might be a signal that the market is saying that the company is not going to be able to sustain that dividend. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't recommend investing in commercial uh, uh, REITs either, uh, especially office space, because I think that, you know, in the post-pandemic world, we've kind of proven to ourselves it's ridiculous to really you know, have an office in the city. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, if the internet was invented before cities, we wouldn't drive into cities, you know, to, to go to work. You know, yesterday I went to, I had a great meeting with the CEO of, of Udemy. Uh, and it took me, and I live 20 minutes south of San Francisco, usually when there's no traffic. It took me an hour and a half to get there and an hour and a half back. Don't invest in office-based rates. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, and Renvir from Mauritius wrote here, my goal this year is to start playing golf and meet with 50 CEOs. Awesome. Awesome. And as I mentioned to you a couple months ago, um, when I was younger, what I did uh, was I, I was a caddy. And I would go to golf clubs and I would caddy. I get five bucks an hour. I am that old. I get five bucks an hour. So I got 20 bucks for a four hour round. And I would just listen. And I would listen to what they talked about, how they conducted business uh, as well. And it's a great way to network. Yeah. And I've met uh, a lot of investors uh, by playing golf. Yeah. Accidentally. I didn't do it on purpose. One guy I met <clears throat> was playing behind us. I was in a threesome and he asked to play with us. I played at, at Sharon Heights, a great golf course here in the Bay Area. Uh, and I said, hey, do you want to join us? And he actually became one of my biggest investors. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be a good golfer either. Okay. Uh, and then Kamal wrote, uh, thanks. And I hope all is well. Great. Great to see you. Uh, Ralph wrote, uh, when is the Golden Platinum MBA degree meeting uh, in Eastern time? Yeah. So it's 1120 Pacific time. So that's 2.20 2 p.m. your time. So 2.20 to, to, to 4.20. Yeah. 2.20. Uh, yeah. 2.20 to 4.20 every Thursday. Okay. And Andrej wrote, uh, hey, Chris, happy new year. Great to see you. Uh, you wrote, uh, what is your way to stay informed concerning financial news? What is a source of ideas uh, for trading? Uh, best regards. Yeah. So for me, I like to invest. I'm very long-term focused. Yeah. Uh, so what I do is this. Every morning when I'm getting ready, including this morning, when I'm in the shower, I, I do this. Alexa, what's the Wall Street Journal news? From TwinCities.com. Alexa, stop. So Alexa will go through and just read the Wall Street Journal news to me. Yeah. And if I don't like the story, then I just say, uh, A -L -A -L -E -X -A, next story. Yeah. That's how I get all of my updates. That's how I found out about, about the ETFs as well with respect to Bitcoin. Yeah. And that way you work smarter and not harder. Now, what I'm reading right now, the uh, audible book I'm listening to through ALEXA -E is the Elon Musk book by, um, by Walter Isaacson. Uh, it's amazing. It's about 20 hours. I'm almost done with it. It's incredible. It's incredible. And one of the best ways to educate yourself from a business perspective and a self-improvement perspective is to listen to audiobooks written on or by very successful people because it's not theoretical and you can learn their secrets. Yeah. And one great, great thing about Elon Musk is he said, if you set a three-year deadline, you'll achieve that goal in three years. If you set a deadline of three days, you'll get it done in three days. Yeah. And then Mark wrote, um, are we at the bottom because of uh, inflation? Yeah. Um, so it looks like retail sales were, better, were stronger than expected uh, in December. Uh, and inflation actually ticked up a little bit as, as well. Uh, and this data just came out yesterday and today. Uh, and it leads me to believe that Rather than uh, the Federal Reserve signaled in December they're going to cut rates three times this year, maybe it's one or two times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then Ralph wrote, uh, where can I find uh, the Zoom link, please? Yeah. So if if you're in the uh, Silver MBA degree program, uh, just go to the very first lecture uh, of the MBA degree program in order to get access uh, to the, the weekly Zoom link. Um, and if you're in gold or platinum, I'll show you here. So if you're in gold or platinum, uh, what you can do is go to my website. And if you're in gold or platinum, uh, you're grandfathered into all future MBA degree programs for gold. Yeah. But the way you do that is you go here to MBA student login. Okay. And then just go down here uh, to the May 1st start date class and log in using the password that I provided everybody. Don't list it here, please. <laughs> that I pride everybody in the, in the first day of class. Thank you. All right. Cool. Uh, and then Nicholas wrote, uh, I just set up a Roth IRA account. Nicely done. Uh, my question is, what is the difference between the ticker VOO, <coughs> VTY, SPX? <coughs> Are those overlapping? Is one better than the other? Yeah, I tend to go with VU. Um, just because it's the most liquid of all of them and has the lowest, lowest fees. 
And so the VU ticker VOO is where I put my money when I'm not sure where to put it. And the VU um, uh, has fees of 0.03%. And what that means is this. So it represents the 500 stocks that make up the broader U.S. markets. It's a great long-term investment. <clears throat> and so the fees of 0.03% means for every 100 bucks that I invest, I pay three pennies per year in fees, which is nothing. Don't invest in mutual funds. They're a scam. The fees are several hundred basis points. Yeah. And you pay more taxes too if you invest in mutual funds. Why? Because mutual fund portfolio managers, what they do usually in the fourth quarter of each year is they chase performance by buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling so they can get a bigger bonus. And what that means is when you get your K-1, meaning your tax document, you're going to pay more in terms of taxes. Because in most countries, the way it works is you pay higher taxes uh, if you make money on something in less than one year. Yeah. That's why you got to be a long-term shareholder. Uh, moving on to Renvir, who wrote, uh, what are your best tips for getting the most out of reading books? How do you read more books faster while retaining more information? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have time to sit down to read books anymore. And my eyesight's getting worse too. Um, I used to have a Kindle where I made the font size 8 million, <laughs> uh, but I actually prefer to listen to books. And what I usually do is um, I make A-L-E-X-A read books at 2x the speed, one and a half to two x times. Yeah. Kind of like a lot of people that watch my MBA program or my courses, uh, they, they, they put my voice at one and a half times. So I sound like Chipmunk, Chipmunk Chris to speak faster. Okay. Uh, and then Firestick uh, wrote here, now I believe I miss the professional grooming and self-development with multiple people, which college provides uh, resulting in me being an antisocial uh, person. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and then you wrote, I, I feel uh, completely lost. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember, I remember when, when, when I was, uh, when I was a programmer, a developer. I worked at Accenture. Uh, I, I would code 10 to 12 hours per day. Uh, and, and I loved it. I was in a zone. Um, and I was kind of like a brain on a stick or at least a stick. And I would go out to parties and I was nervous, man. I was nervous because I wasn't really being that social. And then I forced myself to move to open spaces. I forced myself to run towards my fear and to socialize more often. And after you do that for a while, it feels uncomfortable at first, but after a while it becomes second nature and a lot easier. And when you do that, you have to, you have to tell yourself if you're antisocial, which, which I was before, that I don't care what people think of, of me, right? Remember I showed you this earlier on today during the webcast. You got to live at this level. I'm not saying be rude or disingenuous. But tell yourself, I don't care what people think. I'm just going to be me. People love you for being you. Always. And as Dr. Seuss says, those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Be like that. And I remember for years, uh, I had problems uh, with interviews. I had problems because I was being too robotic. You know, I was over preparing. And then finally, I went to an interview one day. And I told myself, I don't care. And I was just myself. And I sat back and we talked about the weather, talked about baseball, talked about other stuff. And I nailed that interview. You got a bond before business. And I got more and more job offers because of that. Because I got to the point where I just didn't care what people thought. It's kind of like when you're asking somebody out in a date. Just be yourself, man. Because everybody else is taken. Okay, cool. All right. So I want you all to write a book this year. I want that to be your New Year's resolution. And I want you to go to informational meetings and give your book away to people, okay? Uh, or if you apply to university, send in your book. Um, when you're interviewing at companies, give them your book. Who does that? Nobody. And if you think it's too much work, I want you to ask yourself this. I say this with love my heart as always. How badly do you want that job? And so I'm going to play you a short video here on how to create a book. Please keep typing your questions. Thanks. So I've, I've written a number of books. I'm not going to market them, but it's a really simple process. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. And if you do what I'm about to tell you to do, 
and you go to informational meetings or interviews with admissions committees at universities and you give them your book, I promise you, it increases the probability of you getting into that school or you getting that job, even if it's just a, a networking meeting. It's really easy to do. And if you think it's too much work, then, and I say this with love in my heart, I need to ask you, how badly do you want that job or to get into that school? So the way you do it is I have a template for you and I don't ask for your email or anything. And the way to access that template is you go over here to uh, harunmba.com slash write book. That's all one word, all lowercase write book. And you download a, a template. And this template is in Microsoft Word format and it looks like this here. And there's one page of instructions right at the beginning. And this one page will tell you how to publish this book for free on Amazon Kindle, Amazon uh, paper based, meaning uh, create space and audible.com through acx.com. And the only fee you have to pay is if you want to get somebody to create the cover of your book, please use this person here, Ultracon 22. Uh, she's based in Bangladesh. She's great. She's designed all my books. She, I, I pay her five bucks to start and usually a $20 tip when she creates the covers. And what you do is you just type your book here. It's pretty simple. You make your dedication and you just fill in all the blanks, okay? And then you right click here and you update the field. It's really, really easy to do. And if it feels overwhelming for you to be able to do that, um, what you can do is what I did. And what I did was for my first book here, I wrote 101 articles on LinkedIn over a period of two years. Then I took those articles and what I did uh, was the ones that got the most likes or comment, et cetera, or views. I put those first in my book and then I submitted it and it's done wonders for my career. It's done wonders for a lot of, uh, a lot of my students' careers uh, as well. So please do it. In terms of writer's block, like anything in life, if it feels like work, you're not gonna be good at it. So only start writing when you're in a perfect state of mind. And when you're in a perfect state of mind, you can get a heck of a lot done. You also have to set a deadline date. And Elon Musk once said, if you set a deadline date of three years from now, you'll get it done in three years. If you set a deadline date of three days or three weeks, you'll get it done in three days or three weeks. And you gotta vocalize that goal too. Tell your friends, family members, et cetera, you're writing a goal uh, and provide a deadline date. Last thing I'll say in that is, uh, according to Tony Robbins, who I've met a couple times, great guy, he actually invested in one of my companies in VC years ago too. But according to Tony Robbins, 90% of people give up on their New Year's resolutions by the third week of January. The reason they give up is because they don't set a deadline date. So set that deadline date. All right, next question I've got is from Jeet who wrote, are there any specific skills we can master uh, in depth uh, in, in your MBA program? Yeah, so the way the MBA program works is there are six pillars, okay? And in the pillars, there's technology pillar, okay? Which are electives, it's not part of the core curriculum. So you can master many different tech skills, including how to program, how to use AI and much more. There's also an entrepreneurship uh, track uh, and in the entrepreneurship track, we have the uh, venture capital uh, boot camp, uh, where I teach you, you know, how to start a company from scratch. The other four verticals are as follows. This is buying me time to think. The other four verticals are as follows. I've got sales, marketing, and communications, uh, where I teach you uh, how to write like an incredible journalist. I have my own column in Forbes magazine. I've also published a number of books, and I'll teach you how to present with passion, right from the heart. Uh, aside from that, we have finance and accounting, where I'll teach you everything about finance and accounting from scratch. Um, uh, we also have uh, uh, economics management strategy, where I teach you uh, how the world of economics works from a fiscal and monetary policy perspective, how the world works. Uh, and then uh, we also have personal growth, uh, which is the last vertical, where I teach you how to accomplish much more every single day. I teach you about goal setting. I teach you about productivity. I provide you with tons of templates as well to make you way more productive uh, because if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Now, I know that sounds like a, a lot. And the way I've structured the MBA program is I've set it up <clears throat> so that I feel like I, I'm a waiter and you're my customer. Hopefully I'm an okay waiter with good food. But when you go to a restaurant, this is where I proposed to my wife, Christine, uh, in, in Paris in the year 2000. She said yes. But when you go to a restaurant, you look at the entire menu, but you only order one or two items. 
And that's what I feel like my MBA program is for you. I provide you with a menu of tons of different business and tech skills, and you choose the ones you're most passionate about and watch those lectures. And you can ask me an infinite number of questions about, about anything while we do the MBA program uh, together. Yeah. And the way I set it up is there's 100 core classes. That doesn't include the tech electives. There's 100 classes. And after each of the 100 classes, there's a very short quiz and no other homework. And the quiz takes you no time because it's easy and it's edutaining, meaning uh, the, the classes are educational uh, and entertaining. I got awful dad humor, laugh at me, not with me, please. And so in order to pass the MBA degree program, all you have to do is get over 50% on half, meaning 50 of the 100 quizzes. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> uh, Ted wrote here, I, I love jokes, thank you. Uh, you wrote, talk is cheap until you talk to a lawyer. I know, I know. And if you want to use great lawyers, you can go to LegalZoom.com. Uh, which is what I use uh, for, for, for legal advice. And it's like 35 bucks per half hour uh, call with them. They talk really slowly though. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Jeet wrote, is Google Sheets more relevant than Microsoft Excel in 2024 and beyond? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, Microsoft Excel can do a hell of a lot more uh, than Google Sheets. You know, Google Sheets can only do about five or 10% of what Excel hell can. Yeah. And over a billion people have purchased Excel since it was released back in the 1980s by Microsoft. Uh, and the great thing about Excel right now is that you can do Python in Excel. And I teach you exactly how to do that in the Python elective uh, in the MBA degree program. For those of you that signed up for the Python elective, uh, it's in section 14 of 17 uh, in that program. Plus, Microsoft is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to AI. They've done a great job. Satya Nadella has really turned the company around. And I expect a lot more AI features to be added to Excel and all Microsoft applications uh, as, as well. Yeah. Now, in terms of why should you use Google Sheets instead of Excel? Well, if you want to share uh, just a, a, a quick and dirty spreadsheet with others online, uh, I recommend using Google Sheets. It's a lot easier to do so. But if you want to do anything advanced or data analysis, definitely recommend Excel. Yeah, I love Excel. I've been using it since the 80s. Yeah, I am that old. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to wrap up today's call. Uh, for those of you in my Silver MBA degree program, I'll see you at 10 a.m. today for a one-hour Zoom call. For those of you uh, in my uh, Gold and Platinum MBA degree program, I'll see you at 11.20 a.m. today for two hours, a specific time as always. And I'd love to see you all join my webcast tomorrow, okay, January 12th. Just come on my YouTube channel at 11 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow as I'm gonna talk about my eighth annual Gold and Platinum MBA degree program. I'm also gonna be giving away two courses for free to everybody on that call. Uh, and then just, I have to disclose this, uh, my prices are going up materially starting uh, in, in February. So this is the last time you'll be able to purchase uh, the Gold or Platinum uh, MBA degree program or any of my courses at, at low prices. Uh, starting in February, prices are going up uh, materially. Um, Thank you, everybody, uh, and, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. See, see you tomorrow, hopefully. Ciao. Hi, I'm Chris Haroon, and this MBA degree program is not what you think it is. It's better. This program is more than 25 years of business experience, all rolled into one easy-to-access online program. I've sold over 1 million courses in every single country. I've worked at Goldman Sachs. I have an MBA from Columbia University. And I've worked in the venture capital, hedge fund, and consulting industries. I've also started many companies. And my courses have been featured in Forbes, Business Insider, CNN, and NBC. If you're ready to nail your next interview, get a better job, get a raise, start that business you've always dreamt of, improve the one you currently run, or better manage your personal finances, then this MBA degree program is for you. I can't begin to tell you how comprehensive this program is. It's got everything, including more than 300 hours of on-demand video. I would have to do one of those dramatic opening title crawls from a certain space movie just to show you.
and check out all the amazing reviews from students who have already enrolled in this MBA degree program. Last but not least, there is a 30-day, 100% money-back guarantee. And because you can access this program from any device, meaning a desktop computer or a laptop computer or a tablet or even your smartphone, it means you can comfortably fit it into your schedule. Even if you work full-time, it's no problem. So if you're ready to unlock the key to your potential, then I'll see you in class.